वाहे गुरु जी का खालसा वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह I will be answering the questions best to my abilities in the same given order. Jassa Singh Ahlawalia was a serious, popular, and a courageous leader. He was humble, but a man of determination. From 1729 onwards at Kartarpur, Jassa Singh was under the mentorship of his adopted father, Nawab Kapoor Singh. He was trained to serve the Panth. He was given the responsibility of feeding the horses. This helped teach Jassa Singh patience, humility, and love. Nawab Kapoor Singh was incredibly brave, spiritual, and humble. Jassa Singh imbibed these traits from him. Nawab Kapoor Singh made Jassa Singh the supreme commander of the Sikh forces. Besides being a brave commander and a wise political leader, he was deeply re religious and a man of pious character. He rescued 2,200 abducted Hindu girls from Abdali. He was so selfless that he declined the throne of Delhi to avoid internal war. He didn't want that different groups of Sikhs. Should fight among themselves. It was due to his leadership and guidance that the Sikhs got near to self-rule in the Punjab. Sardar Bagel Singh decided not to rule over Delhi. He wanted to construct good orders all over in Delhi in the memory of Sikh gurus and Sikh history. In 1783, Sardar Bagel Singh, along with the Sikh army, took over the Red Fort. Emperor Shah Alam was now reduced to begging for his life, and his wife Begum Samru asked for two things. That Emperor Shah Alam's life be spared, and that he be able to rule over the Red Fort. His response to Begum Samru's request was that Mughals hand over to the Sikhs all historically significant Sikh places and pay tax to finance for the construction of Gurdwaras. He also demanded that Mughal treasury would bear all the expense of 4,000 Sikh soldiers during construction. He didn't ask anything for himself. With the help of all the residents of Delhi, Sir Dal Bagel Singh found and established. Seven historical gurdwaras. On the completion of all the gurdwaras, Sardar Bagel Singh then decided to return to Punjab, where he was persuaded by Munshi Ram Dayal not to abandon Delhi once the Mughals have conceded to his authority and supremacy. But Bagel Singh replied, "We have been in doubt with kingdom and destiny, Bar Guru. Whenever we wish, we could capture Delhi. It won't be difficult for the Khalsa. Asking for forgiveness is really important." It requires a lot of courage for someone to accept their mistakes. Realization of mistake is the biggest thing that can help in forgiving and understanding. Our Sikh leader, Jassa Singh Rangadia, was removed from the Dal Khalsa for joining Adina Beg's royal army. Mir Manu, along with Adina Beg, came after Sikhs and seized Ram Rani Fort with about 500 Sikhs inside. Sikhs were running out of food and supplies and decided they'd rather be martyred in battle than die of starvation. Hearing battle cry of the Sikhs, Jassa Singh Ramgadia realized his mistake and decided to join his brethren Sikhs. Sikhs agreed to his message and went inside the fort with him and a large amount of supplies. He sent a message to Mir Manu that the siege be lifted. Upon Dewan Kaula Mal's suggestion, Mir Manu made peace with the Khalsa and gave an estate near Amritsar. Dal Khalsa was very pleased with Jassa Singh Ramgadia for his help at a time of need and they accepted him and his men back in. They appointed him. Commander of the Ram Rani Fort, and the fort's name was changed to Ramgarh. Nawab Kapoor Singh divided the camp into two parts on the basis of age of the Jatidars because he was finding it difficult to manage such a large force centrally, particularly after Darbar Singh's death in 1734. He gathered all the Singhs and organized Khalsa into two dals: Buddha Dal and Taruna Dal. Buddha Dal was formed consisting of Singh over 40 years of age. And was entrusted with the service of keep of Gurdwaras and preaching Sikh thought. The Runadal, considered Singh below 40, was a more active vision, and their duties consisted of helping the suffering, fighting the enemy who attacked the Sikhs, and establishment of Khalsa government in the country. Fighting for justice and righteousness is part of Sikhi, which Sikhs in today's time are not following. Sikh leaders are fighting each other internally to gain more power, and is putting a negative impact. Changes in lifestyle have created differences of opinion among Sikhs who belong to the Panth. Such differences of opinion have divided the Sikh community, and occasionally led to violence among themselves. Sikhs living in a Western society have to deal with problematic issues where certain Western values don't blend with Sikh religious principles. In my opinion, keeping a distinct appearance while living in a mixed culture society is a big challenge for Sikh kids. A lot of kids are getting bullied. And if a Sikh is seen, he is misunderstood to be a Muslim or a Hindu. We are growing up in a society where we are surrounded by alcohol, 
drugs, etc., that is strictly prohibited in Sikhi. It is very challenging when living outside the Sikh community to rigorously adhere to practices required by Sikhism. We have a lot to learn from the 18th century Sikhs, who in their imperfection still delivered for the Panth, be it as farmers, traders, or as warriors, they fought for truth and the right cause. They took a stand to save their identity and faith and won against all odds. If we look at Sikhs of 18th century, we find that each and every one of them was a real Sikh in Khalsa who had total control over five thieves because they had reached the highest level of spirituality. So they were ruling spiritually already. We should educate people about who we are. World should have better knowledge about Sikhism. We should stay connected to Bani, that hope keep balance in other religious practices with the expectations of modern life while associating with other cultures. It's a Nam and Simran that protect us from Maya and the God. Vichar Sanjay Kardia Hoya, Hoya Pulla Chokadi Mafi, Vahe Guruji Ka Khalsa, Vahe Guruji Ki Fateh.